Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Will you all please rise and we will sing our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Alleluia. Alleluia. What a beautiful day. Ah, the snow is at that point where it doesn't look so good. But it's a beautiful day because Christ is risen indeed. And isn't this setting, can you all see this setting up here? What a wonderful job was done with flowers. There's flat stone in here and the decoration is just, just beautiful. Uh, I would uh, call out those who are responsible, but I know how shy you all are. I'll just say thank you to those who had anything to do with uh, setting this all up today. Thanks to those who purchased the flowers and uh, did the arrangements. What a, what a glorious compliment to a beautiful and glorious day that the Lord has made. Thank you all for being here. Well, let us begin then in prayer. Will you pray with me our prayer of the day? And we pray, Almighty God, you have overcome death through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and have opened to us the gate of everlasting life. We humbly beseech you that as you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the risen Lord Jesus, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Won't you be seated and we will have reading of the Word of God. from Acts chapter 10. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, you yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. 
They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he was the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Won't you all please rise for a reading of our Holy Gospel. Alleluia! Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia! And we read today from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed He is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see Him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell His disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to Him, took hold of His feet, and worshipped Him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of our Lord. And soon shall we go. We are the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Heavenly Father and the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I have said many times in my faith journey, and I know I've said it from this pulpit as well, that when I read the Gospel of Matthew, he sounds to me like a lawyer making his arguments before the court. I note the careful proofs he offers in evidence to his case of the legitimacy of this Jesus as the Messiah of the God of Abraham. I have pointed to many of the more than 60 direct quotes he makes from ancient Scripture, and I've made mention of the countless indirect references he makes as well. From his first quotation from the book of Isaiah, Behold, a virgin shall conceive, 
to his last piece of evidence from Psalm 22, coming as Jesus hung upon that cross and with his next to last breath cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Indeed, to the very last, Matthew has made his case to draw the court to the only conclusion to which they could reasonably come. Oh, but now, on this morning, this first Easter morning, Matthew is without scriptural argument. For on this morning, this first new morning, the ancient scriptures are silent. Silent as an empty tomb. But on this day, Matthew does not confront an absence of evidence, but the evidence of absence. At the dawning of this new day, the gravesite is not silent. It is, an, it is an epicenter. It is active in brilliant light and the shifting of massive stone and the proclamation of the Lord God's messenger. As the earth groaned and shook at the moment of His death on the cross, now the earth quakes in brilliant flash as a new day dawns. A first new day to which the law of Moses no longer speaks. God's messenger speaks. He is not here. He has been raised. Today we see that Matthew's case has been, well, as they say in the legal game, O-B-E, overcome by events. Matthew's case was never going to go to a jury. Today is a new day when the will and power of the Lord God Most High has fulfilled all prophecies, redeemed all debts, and made answer to His Son's mournful cry upon the cross. Today, God makes His great and powerful statement that is beyond all deliberation, beyond all judgments. For today, on this first new day, God has overcome all destroying sin and death. He has raised the crucified Messiah raised for His glory, raised for His righteousness. You stand this morning in witness before the empty tomb, perhaps in wonder as Mary and Mary were. Today you stand in witness to what your Lord God has done and perhaps feel joy as those women did. Oh, you might say, we are here in Buffalo Lake, not in Jerusalem. And it is 2,000 years later, not that very morning after. And to that I say, exactly. Exactly my point. You are here on this morning that is 2,000 years later, you are not absent. You are the evidence. And what more clear witness to this deed that God has done. But do you see what He has done? Do you see on this day, the Father has raised your Savior. He has raised Him for you. This new day is for you. 
From this new Easter day, it is no longer the threat of accusation nor the fear of death's sting that can compel you. For today, faith ascends to its dazzling place, shining with the very light of the world to become the power to move you in love, one in the body of the resurrected Christ. Today, the courtroom has been cleared, for the Lord God of all creation speaks. He is risen, for I have raised Him. He is risen that you may be my righteousness, that you shall be my glory. He is risen indeed because I have so loved you. Thanks be to God. Amen. May the peace of the risen, the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ keep you, your, you, your hearts and minds, in His one body. Amen. We will sing and I will ask you to rise. We will sing our hymn of the day, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds. Well, whilst you're standing, I'll come down and join you. Today, we are going to declare our faith, our creed, using the words of the Nicene Creed. Normally, we would, we would declare the Apostles' Creed. So, the, the words are just a little bit different, so, so pay close attention. And there are no pictures, so I'll stand next to Mary so you can help me with the big words. <laughs> and we proclaim that we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit, he became man, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and he was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you all. Let us share with one another a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Alan, happy Easter, sir. Mary, peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. Happy Easter. All right, happy Easter. Lisa, happy Easter. Good morning. Peter out, we'll, uh, we'll begin our offering then. Let us pray. 
Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us compose our hearts now for the prayers of the church. Almighty God, you have fought to restore us to righteousness for these 2,000 years. And in Christ Jesus, you have won the victory over sin and death. Help us, Lord, to tell the story of that victory and give thanks for it daily that our children and theirs may know your steadfast kindness and live in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, on this day you have broken the bonds of death and have risen victorious over the power of the grave. Thank you for your gift of forgiveness and new life. By your grace, grant that each day the sinner in us may be put to death and the new self be raised to live with you in righteousness and faith. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, on this day, when the celebration of your redeeming work in Jesus the Christ is at its fullest expression, strengthen and sustain those whose faith is new or fragile. Help them to see in your church's witness a new vision of life in which grace and mercy are poured out upon all. Lord, in your mercy, Good and gracious God, strengthen us, and especially all who mourn, by the promise of your reunited life with Christ. May the hope of the resurrection to eternal life give us comfort and help us to live in confidence that we will see our loved ones again on that day when Christ returns in glory. Lord, in your mercy, and Lord, healer of our every ill, we pray for those who wait in sadness and uncertainty or in despair due to illness or other affliction. Especially today we remember Dee Dee and Dennis. We remember Betty and Ricky, Sandy and Tom, and Sandy and Roger, Stephen and Alan. And we remember those in care centers like Gail and Mary Ann and Ruth and Warren, and Mabel, and Zelda. Help us to be your healing presence and bring your promise of hope to all. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we commend to you all for whom we pray, trusting in your boundless and steadfast love. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to our Lord God Almighty and today especially for this precious gift of a risen Lord. As it was on that night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take all of you and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to all of his disciples, saying, Take and drink, for this is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. Let us pray now together the words our Savior taught us. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All is ready at the table of the Lord. All who call on the name of the risen Lord are welcome. Little children who haven't begun to commune are welcome to come forward for a blessing. We'll commune helpers up here and then ushers will uh, arrange you to come up as, as we usually do.
Let us pray. May the body and blood of our resurrected Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and unto life everlasting. Amen. Will you please rise for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you. And on this first Easter day, may he give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will sing our closing hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.